welcome everyone to the show welcome to the show you know if you ever wonder why i do it so loud like that very enunciate when i'm lining up the audio tracks mm -hmm. afterwards that helps yeah i can i can read my lips so and line up the audio this? just to be that expressive to. yeah yeah it's just to be expressive okay you know i just want to know i just want you to know you Failed on your job of turning those lights on. Ah, oh, yeah. And turning yep. this, right? Yep. Uh, I mean, you, you got one job, bro. Just one? One job. Really? Yeah, today. Yeah, pretty much. Feels like it. What's up, uh, today? How's everybody doing? Yes, we live on the west coast of Florida, not on the west coast. Yeah. Yeah, so you have the east coast, west coast. We have the better sunsets and the better beaches. Because we're not on the Atlantic. We are live. We are live, Tom Tom. Good evening, everyone. My favorite cartoon, man. Tom and, and Jerry? Jerry? Oh, my God. Yeah, but God. that movie was so bad. Like, that was a shame. Yes. That was shameful what yes. they did. Yes. Like, there was somebody who should have been beat. Yes. Like, so bad. Greetings. Yes. Greetings. What's up? Um,. Hi guys from the Netherlands. What's happening? Hey, Netherlands. Uh, hi guys watching from the hospital. Definitely not as exciting as the Netherlands. Just, just saying. Hopefully ho everything's good, man. Ho hopefully everything is good. Yes. Um, Christian. What's yeah. up from Puebla, Mexico, man? Is that where he's from? Puebla, Mexico. Really? Lara, yeah. Yeah. Huh. I is. guess that didn't occur to me that. Hello, Bobby. What is happening? What's up, Bobby? Uh made it who made it hello gentlemen uh oh okay yeah hey, yeah made it um uh, speaking of make it hi hi team red team red headquarters team i know red headquarters yeah i like it that's pretty cool what's up oscar how you been hey man what's up buddy dallas is checking in dallas is so checking in um yeah says i i want to watch tom and jerry now yeah, you know, like the cartoons are good. The cartoons are the best. I, I just, I don't know. I, I feel like that's a nostalgic watch, though. Like, I feel like you could probably watch one episode and then you'd just be like, yeah, okay. Oh, you done? No. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's just like. I, I don't know. I just I just feel like it's. Uh, you remember Animaniacs? A Animaniacs. Animaniacs? Yes. Animaniacs. Okay. Well, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They were much later. Tom yes. and Jerry is like yeah oh no 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 hundred percent but I, like that that was one of the Animaniacs yes. are from the eighties yes wow yes. what a I, I have because that was a bunch of comics that was with uh, Pinky and the Brain and and the little girl with the dog and uh, the pigeons was that Jacko Wacko something like that yeah I love it Wacko. Jacko, Jacko and Dot. Yes. I have no idea. I have no idea. By the way, and Maniac, sir. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, total, total. Uh, Tom and Jerry and Pink <laughs> Panther was my stuff. I liked the Pink, Pink Panther because there was good. like no words. Yeah. It was like the weirdest thing ever, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, Same as the um, uh, Rut Runner and uh, Coyote. Yeah, Wiley Coyote, super genius. Oh, wow. Awesome. It's just like the way it rolls off the tongue. Wiley e Coyote. Wiley. Wiley e Coyote. <laughs> it's rough, man. I know, because it's English. You probably had it in Spanish. Oh, totally. In and Spanish. it's totally different. Okay. Like, yep. Yep. Roadrunner. Okay. Yep. Violent, violent cartoon. A cartoon character running off of a cliff. <laughs> Poof. Yeah. I mean, it's you know, so blowing up a lot yeah, of stuff. Yosemite Sam, rootness, tootness, cowboy. Up, what's Marty? up, Mr. Marty? Or should I say, hey, what? I got to eat glass. I get to get his voice. I, gotta have glass. <laughs> I cannot imitate Marty's voice. I mean, I might be able to, but uh, get your questions in for sure. Fernando is going to try start. Try. Because there, there are some good ones here. So don't worry. We, we will definitely get to them. Uh, hey, Dean, Fernando, what's up? Oh, hey, fellas. What's up? What's up? Uh, cool. Watching the Daytona 500 at home Ooh. in Beantown. I mean, it's... Did you already get? Right there. Yeah, it's uh, about there. 
about there is yeah that would be where it's at Daytona. yeah so if you if you were to go two and a half hours that way yeah you'd be there so if you make a hole right there behind that yeah just boom boom you're right there daytona speedway you're there straight shot i mean once you hit on i4 you're there Mm -hmm. it's like magic and i wouldn't want to go all right, I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to come back to this, so don't worry, okay? Do you... I'm just going to come back. I, I, yeah, I pinned it. Thank okay, you. guys. Hey, before we get too, too in the weeds, because, you know, you guys can keep saying hi. Hi. Uh, yep, I, I, four, I oh, hey, I4 East. Um, on the talk of cartoons, Ren and Stimpy. Haha. <laughs> Ren and Stimpy were a tough one, because I think, I think somebody lost a bet. Or Fun. place the bet to see if uh, that type of couple could make a cartoon. Because Ren and Stimpy were, were, yeah, that was a weird, that was a weird cartoon. Yeah, it was. Yeah, when yeah. Tregillis found out that they were together. together <laughs> um, oh, yeah, that was. Yeah, cool. his religion did not allow that. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, dude, I've never seen someone throw away so much Ren and Stimpy stuff in my life. His life was destroyed. It really was because he would he he would imitate Ren and Stimpy and it was so good and you know yeah. do the finger you know oh my god and then uh, yeah and someone broke him and it was almost like it was sad it was a yeah. sad day mm-hmm. you know because mm-hmm. he was like going around with all his Ren and Stimpy, Stimpy stuff going does does anybody want this Ducktales the original Ducktales not this crappy one they have now Fe- definitely definitely good uh, they were weird and viral v- yeah vile. Very, very gross. Yes. Beavis and Butthead. Who did not love Beavis and Butthead? <laughs> um, loved Beavis and Butthead. Uh, Pee-wee's Playhouse. Never really got into that. You know? Loved the Pee-wee's Big Adventure movie. Flintstones. Flintstones yeah. Right. Any, anything awesome. Hanna-Barbera was, was the shit, right? I mean, I feel like that was just... Yeah. That's what you grew up watching. That's what I grew up watching. Jetsons, hanna yeah. you know, mm-hmm. all, all that stuff. Yogi Bear. Yogi hey, Bear. Boo-boo. Um, don't forget Tailspin. Yeah. Tailspin? Well, I think t- uh, Tailspin was Baloo, and he had his little cubby friend, and they flew around in an airplane, um, a water plane. It was, it was like, it was like Raiders of the Lost Ark, but What was cooler. the, um, uh, what was the cartoon with robots? The, uh, that was this, uh, lady always cleaning. The Jetsons. That was it? Yeah, that was the Jetsons. Okay. okay. And there was just one robot. Yeah. yeah, that was just yeah, fun. Yeah. And the dog, I think, no? Astro, no. Um, yeah. No, he was he was he was real. Um, Dragon Ball Z came, yeah. I mean, Dragon Ball Z. That was when I was in school. I mean, yeah. honestly, my favorite that I used to watch every morning was uh, Fat Albert. Hey, hey, hey! I love Fat Albert. Johnny Bravo. I liked the concept of Johnny Bravo. Johnny Bravo was kind of dumb. Like he was definitely cool to watch, but. Yeah, G.I. Joe. Oh, I watched the crap out of G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe, I watched a lot. Sigmund and the Sea Monster. Um, that was these uh What about um oh what was uh what was the name of the gorilla that rode on the top of the uh the little van? Bigly Bigly. Um Oh man, I can't think of the name of it. But anyways, yeah. Um that was that was one of Tiny Tunes. Oh, when Haley was born, uh we did her room in Tiny Tunes. Yeah. Yep. That was rough because it was like right on the end of Tiny Toons being over. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we found enough stuff. Transformers, Thunder Voltron, Cats. yeah, Voltron, Thundercats, Chips. Chips was a TV show, yes. And uh, I Chips. rode around. Yeah, that was uh, uh, Frank and Ponch. They were uh, California Highway Patrol. Yep, yep. yep. And me and my buddy Tony rolled Ventura. our we rolled our bikes around in the seventies. Yeah. And he was dark hair. I had blonde hair. And yeah. So you can guess who got to play who. Um, <clears throat> and we, we, I mean, I can't tell you how many. Nah, 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 nah. Anyways. Um, oh, yeah. We were totally chips. It was the coolest thing ever. Okay. Uh, we were having fun with this, but we got a show to put on. Thank you guys so much for allowing us to trip down memory lane there. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Yeah. Grape Ape. Thank you. Yes. Grape Ape. Grape Ape. You're the man. I knew somebody would get the He-Man. Watch the hell out of that. He-Man? He-Man yeah. was only made to sell toys. You guys like G.I. Joe, Transformers, He-Man. Those are all designed about selling sending, selling toys for guys. That that was it. Hasbro was like, 
we know how to sell toys. We'll make cartoons yeah. and people will buy this. And it worked because I spent a lot of money on G.I. Joe and Transformers because they were just cool. Um, lots of battles went on in my house. Lots of battles mm-hmm. with Legos and G.I. Joe. And it was it was fantastic. Oh, Laugh Olympics. Yeah, that was good, too. Yep, watched a lot of that. Um, Smeagly, wasn't that the dog? <laughs> Anyways, uh, hey guys, we have this little page that some of you guys are members of that is called the 12 Old Clean Wire Club. And every weekend, Fernando scours the page and tries to find something that looks extremely cool that one of you guys did. And this picture is always brought to you by the fine folks that make Tsunami products. It's called Metro Online. You can find them at tsunamionline.com as well as they also make the other one. What's the other one? t Are you sure? Yes. tspec.com or tspecconline.com, I should mm-hmm. say. Uh, makers of fine RCA's distribution blocks and all the stuff that we like to use here in the installation bay. You too could use it. And you're, you're going, wow, Dean, you're selling the promo, but where's the picture? It's right here. So, Tsunami, sponsored by, did this cool marine system. Uh, who is this? Esai. Was this Esai? That was Esai. Esai, one of the competitors for the 12-volt clean wire challenge at Master Tech Expo. This, yep. this yep. soon to guy. be a couple, two weeks away? couple, two weeks away. couple, yeah. two weeks away? I don't know if it sounds good. I, I, I don't know if it sounds good or it looks good. Hey, guys. Hey. Mr. Chris. Bennett, thank you. We did. We got it today. We got it today. We have not opened it yet because we want to make sure Maybe we're live. And, yeah. and today was really stressful. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Good times. But it's been raining here, too, man. So it's, I think it's raining everywhere. Like, Haley's out in the Redwood Forest looking at giant trees, and it has been raining the whole time. And she's like, <laughs> bro, what the hell? I'm like, yeah. eh, it happens. Um, but anyways, that's yeah. what we got and, and why we're being responsible because who doesn't like to be responsible? Yeah. I'm going to not, not, that's not the button I wanted to press. I wanted to press that button. Uh, this first segment of the show, which is now 12 minutes in is brought to you by the five folks at audio control. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's your fault, Chris. Um, Hey, if you're interested in getting some preloaded subwoofer enclosures from audio control with the new space series subwoofers as well as this bike series subwoofers make sure to head over to audiocontrol.com where you can find the cool loaded sealed enclosures using the space series subwoofers and the new ported enclosures using the spike series subwoofers these are awesome boxes covered in vinyl they have the grills (coughs) <coughs> it's a full spec subwoofer, meaning it's the same subwoofer that you get when you buy it standalone. It's not some generic version of it that they put a dust cap on. It's the same subwoofer in a preloaded enclosure, and you can find it at audiocontrol.com. That's all I got. Ooh, shrimp pizza. Uh, I don't know. Shrimp pizza? Yeah, that sounds weird. Yeah, I don't... Yeah. Cheese pizza for sure, but shrimp pizza? Uh um, all right, I'm going to start with this one and then we can queue up whatever you like. Okay, hold on. Stop. All right, there we go. Standalone DSP versus amplified DSP. This is going to come down to personal preference, but my personal preference is I would much rather have an amplifier with a DSP built in it. The reason why is, is there's a lot of them. One of them is installation cost. Okay. So the price of copper is not getting any cheaper, and the amount of time it takes to put two boxes in a car as opposed to one box in a car, believe it or not, is substantial. Okay, so I can actually put a all-in-one in and save my customer money because I don't have to put in two boxes, run two power wires, or do anything like that. So anytime I can use one amplifier or one, we call them boxes, one box for installation, then it saves money, Okay. And the result is more or less the same. Um, For example, this A30 right here, as well as the audio control. We'll we'll use the audio control because right now it's their time. So Mm -hmm. they have the D series amplifiers. You have the D5-1300, D6-1200. You have the D4.800. All of these have their corresponding DSPs in them. So one has a 6-8, one has an 8-10. So all these are built into them, and it just saves time and saves money because now, believe it or not, it is cheaper to buy an all-in-one than it is to buy two separate units. And in some cases, you can't get the configurations that you can get of the DSP amplifier. So I like that. And also, I will say that most manufacturers are putting more effort into their DSP amplifiers 
such as Helix and Audison. Uh, they're putting more effort into that than they are to standalone DSPs. Uh, Moscone just came out with their 830. They also just came, which came out before the new DSP came out. They did come out with the new DSP, uh, the 8 to 10 Aerospace. However, it's being built into more products than is the, the one little standalone DSP. So mm -hmm. it's kind of nice from that regards. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm a bigger fan of that. Would you agree or disagree? Um, I agree because of the reason of that, like one box for everything. Yeah. It makes more sense. It saves you some money. But me personally, I would love to have tons of power, tons of power and, uh, you know, a separate DSP just because well no you, know? you just want your 430 so you could yeah. do an 830 and a 430 correct you, yes. you have four outputs so i mean yes. you, you could come right out of your 830 into your 430 so you'd have plenty of power yeah you know because you have you have tons of power it's tons okay of power man. it's 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 all right tons of power guys uh also yeah and that's what i was saying uh also less wire saves money correct 100 yeah. percent. Mm -hmm. yep mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it does you know for example like this truck right here is getting dual runs of zero gauge um, that's, that's 40 feet of zero gauge at the current price of zero gauge. That's, that's scary. It's millions of, of dollars. That's, <laughs> it's millions of dollars. Okay. So, um, ouch. Yep. Yeah. Right there. Uh, without talking anything, just power wire. Oof. Uh, Hurts. by soon, by coming very soon. No, no, it ain't. I can tell you, I can, I can tell you with a hundred percent. It is not coming very soon. Not soon. Not soon not at soon all. Not soon enough. <laughs> not at all. All right. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, is Ida Control going to come out with a powered sub over 10 or 12? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I the, the reality would probably be yes. However, it's not on the roadmap as of current. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, getting the, like, power is, is an issue. So, they're... How do I say this and in, in, in not get yelled at other than to say the power that we know audio control has, they've had for a while, right? And now that they're owned by Stinger, um, things may change as time moves forward. Uh, so the power game is, is always up for, you know, we'll see how things go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, 2025, go 2025. Um, 2025 is going to be a really good year. <laughs> Just got to make it, yeah. got to make it there. Uh, Dean, LPH harness pack or Metro? The LPH harness is pack, uh, but honestly, I don't care whose LPH harness you want to use. LPH harness is just the T harness. It doesn't matter to me. I like the way pack is doing it because pack is just treating it as a standalone T harness. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, Metra is combining it to work with their DSP. So, which is okay. I mean, they're both going to get you to the same road. It's just, I like plugs. So yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Give me the next one. All right. So hang on uh, before you go. Would you rather, hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to put that on there. Cause that, that's a good question. A uh, couple more weeks. Y'all ready for a hug? Oh my God. You have no idea how much Fernando's waiting for your hug. Dude, I got, I got one already. Did you? Yeah. I might even let him hug me. Just maybe try to crack my back. Cause he's like, it just be like, great. I wanted his hat. I just wanted to wear his hat and he wouldn't even let me wear his hat. Me too. Me too. He I was, say, oh, let me see, so man. stiff, he's man. like, yeah, he had this bitching cowboy it. hat, and he's like, bro, man, you can't touch my hand. Yeah, I'm like, he's like, hey, don't touch it. Like, just, no, just wanna, I just want to take I'm a like, picture. Wah. I'm like, man. You know, yeah. Very aggressive. Did you meet his girlfriend? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, way better than him. So nice. Him? Not so much. Yeah. Not so much. No, yeah. it, was, it was sad. It was so sad. Uh, someone earlier asked, and this is the time to do it. Um, I don't know where it went. They said Focal or, or, uh, Focal or Hertz. Okay. I believe was the question. All right. Um, what did you... Uh... So there are two totally different ideas behind <laughs> speakers other than they're round and they move and they have magnets and all that other fun stuff. Okay. Really, the big difference comes into um, what they're made out of. So the Focal is always going to be a hard dome tweeter of some kind. Everybody like loves hugs. hugs. 
Joseph could be a good hugger because he's like 6'2", so he could probably really like crack and be like, oh. These guys look like bears, man. They're bear yeah. hugs. Oh, dude, you know, Fred Lynch yes. is the hey. best back rub guy. Oh, really? Oh, my God, dude. He will come up to you, and he can work thumbs of magic. Like, oh. I was standing. He did it to me twice, Oh, and I swear to God, I wanted to hug him. I, I about melted. He's just like, I was like, oh, God. Yeah, he's he's like a hands of, of an angel. Um, anyways, uh, sorry about that. So, Focal and Hertz. Focal is going to be a hard dome tweeter. So, it's going to have that hard dome sound. And if you're like, what, what does that mean? So, you have soft dome, you have hard dome. Hard dome is, is going to have that mm, glass breakage, like... <laughs> you know aluminum just crunching sound whereas a soft dome is is not it's it's going to be a little bit less a little timid they're both loud the loudness does not does not diminish like they will both launch you out of the car it's just a matter of do you want like that thx terminator 2 you know because the hard dome tweeter can do that really well the soft dome tweeter is is not going to sound as impressive for that. Mm -hmm. Now, what will you say? Well, why why would anybody want that? Well, because it, it it's not natural. Movies is extremely natural, and some of the music that we listen to now is extremely natural. But you know, if you're primarily a instrument listener, which mm -hmm. is hard to do nowadays, I, I guess um, the soft dome has that more appeal to it. However, if you're deaf, the hard dome is way more fun. What? You, yeah, exactly. So um what's up what up what up all right <laughs> a hug so good you melt in his arms blah hey you know hey it is what it is man you know some days you just you just need a hug uh sorry <laughs> uh but daytona is happening go i don't know who blaney is carry on go um, i mean yeah. may he win go go fast car Go fast car. It's not a did, song. Did Ada answer a question? Thank you, Ada. Have you had the opportunity to work with the new Alpine DSP with Auto EQ? <coughs> um, no. And we've heard mixed reviews on it. <coughs> Naturally, right? You give it to six people, three people are going to love it, three people are going to yeah. be like, uh, um, some people say it works great. Mm -hmm. And other people are like, eh, I don't know what they're going with here. Right. Um, so... I'm going to reserve judgment on it because. <coughs> Go get some water, man. Yeah, I got to get water. Yeah. Ow. Anyways, I'm going to reserve passing judgment on it because I, I haven't had a chance to do it. Now, we are going to have one that we're putting in our display. So I'm pretty excited about that. And we'll know mm -hmm. more soon. <clears throat> ah. All right, there we go. Blowing bubbles. All right. Blowing some bubbles. All right, ready? Yes. I'm going to hide the current comment, and then you can pull one up. Go, my, go with Mike right there. What, Mike? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, dude. Uh, go Hamlin. Got to go with the New England native. Uh, sure. That's NASCAR stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah okay. that's all NASCAR stuff. I was going with Juan, so that's it. Um, I like how Nando isn't frazzled about Dean dying off camera. Oh, he doesn't give a shit. <laughs> he does not care. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? What are we, I mean, the, we, the show I mean, must go on. Exactly. I mean, I mean, you know, who, who cares about that? It's normal, dude. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I'm um, sorry. <laughs> That's what I get. Soft GB10, <laughs> wide and linear, smooth. Yes, the GB10s are fantastic. Anything GB is is fantastic. Those are the audio frogs, by the way. Uh, I have a 2018 Camry with JBL. Can I come out of the JBL amp into a D15 speaker level inputs? The DSR1 and the Ampro have been buggy, even with firmwares. Uh, I mean, technically, yes, but I don't think you have enough channels to actually make it work. So the joy of it, the, you don't have enough channels. So um, if what you're trying to do at this point is say, you know what, it's not working out for me. Buggy is weird because we've done a bunch of these cars and it, it should, should work. But I understand. Mm -hmm. um, 
And it's weird that you'd have two different firmwares, one for, yeah. Anyways, the DSR one. so the D51300 doesn't have enough inputs to make it kind of work. Right, so, right. I mean, if you just wanted to use it, because that's going to have a center channel, you need to retain the center channel. And then you got the three-way set going on, which is... Yeah, there's not enough. That's not big enough DSP. So the answer to the question is no. It, it's not going to work all that well. I mean, you can go now because the center channel is always going to screw it up. I mean, I'm not going to say like, no, no, you can't, but you're going to have an echo effect and you're going to need all the inputs. You're going to have to fix the all pass filter in it. And that's going to be fun because you can't really fix it with that configuration. Yeah. Cause you only have, you have all pass filters on output channels. You only have four output channels. So you'd have to run <laughs> channels one and two would have to be the tweeter in the mid range if they're on the same channel, which I believe they are. Um, and then you'd have to put passive crossovers if you have a three-way set between the tweeter and the mid range. Oh yeah. It's just going to be it's not going to be fun. Not going to be fun at all. Um, that is very weird. Yeah, that's not going to be fun. Can you use the LC 4.800 with a powered subwoofer? Yeah. Yeah. So if you, yeah, because it's just an LC. So if you wanted to come into the LC, I mean, you just, if you buy the powered subwoofer, probably has high level input. I would just run its own high level input into it and do it that way. Oh, Mr. Gary Davis. What's up, Big what Gary? Up, <coughs> um honestly i don't know i think we've done a 2023 i don't know about the 2024 i don't think no i don't think that 2024 but 2023 yeah yes. and i know i just looked at one the other day yeah yeah wasn't too excited um hold on let me pull hang on let me get through here uh i want to pull this one up real quick and let me go back to here um would you rather dsp real fill or sub that's why i kind of wanted to get to this um so the, like the problem with like the D51300 or any other DSP where you, it's like, I only have X amount of channels that I want to use. Um, what do I do? You know, so like a D51300, if you were to do active front and sub, it does have a set of RC outputs still. So it's like, okay, what do I want to do with those? Oh, I'm going to go off to another uh, output. Two so channel. I'm going to go off to two channel off, but which might help because that, extra amplifier would allow us to to fix like some issues like that would give us more channels to to work with mm -hmm. um but in some cases like on the d61200 mm -hmm. if you wanted to go three-way front rear and sub you've lost channels because there's not enough channels in order for that to happen uh in my mind i'm going to do the subwoofer and not the rears so because I want a DSP, which is just EQ, the subwoofer, especially if I'm in a high level to low level situation. Mm -hmm. um, I need those adjustments that are there for the subs, and I could really care less about the rears. I could still use them high level into an amplifier, but I'm not as worried about them creating crappy sound as I am the subwoofer creating crappy sound because I can't go in there and fix it. Um, yeah. But yeah. So maybe more ample. So with the D five thirteen hundred, you have the three inputs, which is four inputs. That has four inputs, four sets of inputs. Um, you're just gonna need another amp. Yeah. All right. So no rear fill. I would do no rear fill. Okay, go ahead. No Sorry, hide. I can flip it. Okay, hide. I'm gonna hide it. Okay, Perfect. and you pull it up. All right. Um, 2017 Lexus GS350 F Sport, all sundown, Neo Pro, sep, wow. a bunch of stuff, super tweeters, salt 50 yep. or 504, DMA10, XS power bank, any helpful advice on DSP settings, uh, setting it up? Um, wow. Uh, I mean, the reality is, is that's, that's going to be a loud system for sure. Um, Make sure that you, the, the, the thing I see a lot of times with like loud systems like this, where it's like you use like loud speakers, not necessarily, and the Neo Pro mid bass. I don't know if that's a, I don't, I'm not real up on the sundown stuff. I don't know if that's a mid bass or if that's a loud speaker. 
I want to think it's probably a loudspeaker. Um, keeping those crossover points up high enough to where those speakers can handle the power you're putting to them uh, is really the most important thing on those because they don't move much and they're not made to. They're not made to put out mid bass. They're made to scream. So, you know, what we typically see is we'll get people in here and they'll like, oh, I set these up and I crossed them over like 120 and you'll and they'll crank it up and the speaker will go, Cock! and you're like, what the frick? And you go, um, where's that crossover point at, man? Maybe pop it up to 250. <laughs> so make um, sure that the crossover point that you're using is the right for your speaker. Right? Yeah. Um, same for your tweeters, of course. And and keep I'm the gains. Guessing, keep the gains down. And I'm guessing that you amplifier. go and active because you have a yeah. DMA 10. So that amplifier has, or that sorry, that DSP has tons of output voltage. So there's no reason for you to to set the to like wide open the gains on the amplifier. Just let the let the DSP do it. Let the DSP do it. Yeah, it'll, it'll it can put out plenty of voltage into that amplifier and get tons of power out of it. I have a question. I'm looking to purchase two 10-inch P3 4-ohm Rockford Fosgates, but I'm not sure what amp to run. My budget is $1,200. Oh, you got you got plenty, you got plenty of money. money. Yeah. You got plenty of money. Um, I mean, just, why don't you get a BD-1000? I mean, get the get the Power Series 1000. Um, P3, yeah. I mean, that's... I mean, for 12, you got plenty of money. Just get the... Get, get what they would recommend, which even is the like, rock for the 750.1. No, no, that's why you got $1,200. Get the Power Series 1000, get the original, get the OG man BD 1000. It's okay. gonna be like 1400 yeah. watts. I mean, the thing is gonna kick ass, it's two tens, man. Yeah, so I mean, get the BD 1000. <laughs> sure, I mean, hey, go all the way, go all the way. Um, now if $1,200 is the budget for the whole thing with the subwoofers, no, then check out the R2 you know, 750.1 or something like that. Cause yeah, that's more affordable or the R R 1000. I think it's, they make them without, or they make a 1200, 1200. Yeah. The R2 yeah. 1200. Um, I think the 750 would probably be enough, but you know, go crazy. Uh huh. All right. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna come back to this. All right. So let's do this one next. Cause that kind of goes back to that question. Uh, what set of six and a half components for the front and coaxial for the rear do you recommend me? I'll be running them with the Hertz four times 150. I'm looking to good sound and good and loud. Thanks. I mean, Hertz makes some extremely loud speakers. Yeah. So I mean, Maybe why would you not just go with the Hertz? Yeah. I mean, I mean, stick, stick with the, have the curtains and drapes match, man. I mean, they make some badass loudspeakers, both in loudspeaker as well as in the Milli Pros. Yeah. So the Milli Pros Milli are Pros. fantastic. Those things will 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 not disappoint. Um, all right, I'm gonna pull this up. I'm gonna shut that off. Uh, backtracking the rear fill sub DSP question: Would you recommend just unplugging the rear speaker altogether? or just gain them way down on the head unit as to not hear them using Kenwood head unit. Oh, all right. So we typically do this a lot with Kenwood head units. Actually, it's kind of the only reason. I mean, it's like the major reason we use Kenwood head units is that Kenwood has volume control in several different locations for the rear speakers so that you can not have to use fader because fader is, is not always the best. Um, because someone could get in there and screw it up. So in the time alignment section, you can reduce the, the two rear speakers as well as in the crossover section, you can reduce the two rear speakers. So that gives you the ability to blend in the rear speakers with the DSP system. So typically what we'll do is we will shut them off, tune the system, and then we will go back in and we will add delay through the radio to just the rears. So put everything back to zero and then add the delay for the rears into the system. And then we'll start to gain them. We'll start with them all the way down and then we'll start to gain them up until we feel that they are like, is there a rear speaker? I think there's a rear speaker. Yeah, there's a rear speaker. Um, yeah. Cause a lot of people like rear speakers. A lot of people have kids, so it doesn't really mean no sound in the rear. It's just, I just don't want it to affect my front sound or I want it. If I do, I want it to make it feel bigger. Um, so, but most of the time we're, we're just, they're just not, they're just there. They're not like, Oh yeah, there's a speaker over there. 
So, but yeah, you can do all that with a Kenwood. It's really cool. Yeah. What's that from Trinidad? I just got my Aerospace 8 to 12, nine channels of Moscone 1. Ooh, nice. Well, can't exactly. find anything exactly. else. I uh, can't find anything else to put speakers in my 2000 Mustang. Any GT. ideas? Um, I mean, it's a nice three-way set. Uh, For sure. You could put some K KRX-3s in there. Flax. Um, we do a lot of flax in the Mustang. We do a lot of flax in the Mustang. Um, the, the hardest part about the Mustang is you have to make all your own brackets. Because if you try to use the bracket for the 2.5 or 3.5 in the door, yeah. uh, it's going to hit. Um, so, and if you try to use the Metro or pack six and a half adapter, it's going to hit. Um, and then the tweeter, it's 2019. <sighs> Tweeter's fun. Uh, the flax tweeter goes in, no issues. Um, so the smaller K2 tweeter would fit, but the new tweeter would you'd have to custom make something so the new es 165 kx3e bows with the frack tweeter that's a big tweeter so you would definitely have to make some kind of amount to fit the frack tweeter in there it'd be fun i'm sure it could work but vamp past the entire rear setup yes yes of course why not yeah i mean yeah but there again it just depends like if you have <laughs> kids, probably not the best idea to band pass them because they're going to want to hear the music. And yes, if the front is loud enough, it's going to come back. Dude, but they can I don't buy know. their own car. They can buy their own <laughs> car. Yes. Okay. Problem solved. My car, car. My I'm, rules. I'm band passing the rear. Do differential roof fill. Listen to Joseph. Okay. Like, he's Mr. over there like Mr. Frickin'. I'm going to cut <laughs> RCAs and stuff. solder stuff or just have a DSP that'll do it like the, um, I don't know, Moscone. Oh, sorry. Oh my gosh. I will say Joseph's um yes. his car. The Kia. The Kia. It's not his car, but it, it's his, not car, his car. I don't know. It might be his it's car. It's gonna be his car. It could be his car. I don't know. Sure. He put a volume knob on the rear mm -hmm. and then he did his whole differential rear he did a, a bunch of, of rear fill trickery. Uh but it was on a volume knob. And I gotta tell you, it was probably the coolest thing ever because and at some point, if I ever get a system in a car, I will be putting a volume knob on my rear speakers. Um, because it was neat. Because some music, you, you put it on, and it's, it, yeah, well, that sounds it cool. It fills the whole car. Yeah. And others, and, and sometimes it was really annoying. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the novelty of it I, was not lost on me. I really thought it was cool to, to, to play with that. Great idea. Yeah, I thought it was cool. I enjoyed it a lot. I, I don't know how practical really good. it would be in an everyday, you know, like, Hey, could you put, no, I'm not putting a knob on your ear speakers. It's just silly. But, you know, oh, I mean, for I demos, it was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so good not? job. I, I really like the way his car sound. He did it. He did a fantastical he did job. A fantastic job. Especially with the tool set that he has. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. He, he's really, he's really pushing that to the extreme. And it, yeah, it just sounded so good. I was, I was blown away. Um, hypothetically speaking, if you hooked up directional stinger RCs backward, could you really tell? Okay. Hypothetically speaking, let's not hypothetically speak. Let's understand what it is when you say directional RCAs backwards. Okay. You're not going to hear anything different in the sound. What you could possibly hear is noise. Okay. So the copper doesn't know which direction it's going. It's not the copper that is directional. What it is, is the drain wire soldered into the RCA at one end and not in the other end. It is on the outside. And what it's designed to do is as it passes through the car, it, it takes all the noise with it and then it doesn't go anywhere because it's not connected at both ends, okay? So the reason it is directional so that the noise moves along with it and then doesn't go into the other source at the other end okay so you could be if you put them in backwards get noise into the head unit which in turn will get noise back to the amplifier so the music doesn't go backwards the music won't go backwards and the copper doesn't care copper is not directional the twist of the the, the shield the RCA, yeah. is what is making that directional so 
There's no hypothetical about it. It'll sound the exact same. Perfect. We do it all the time because we're lazy. No, we don't. We never do. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Last thing I do before I finish is pull those stupid little flags off. <laughs> I hate yeah. those dumbass little flags. <laughs> but that's why it's there. So there you go. It's just for noise. So hypothetically. Hypothetically. <laughs> I got a question, guys. Okay. Is there an adapter to retain the factory backup camera that came with a vehicle? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So the, the answer to the question is yes. Now, the, it's well, a bigger question, though, because yeah. um, most cars, yes. Some there cars, you know. no. Some cars, you need extra things, okay? So, for example, if you've got a brand new Dodge vehicle that was built 20, 2021 to, let's say, 2023, and you want to replace the radio, it might have the high-def camera built into it. Not all of them did because during COVID, they couldn't get them. But a lot of the Rams and stuff like that and the Jeeps, and they they have high-def cameras. That camera will not interface with a current radio. So if you put a high 10 in it from Stinger, then the answer would be yes, because what they do is they convert that over to HDMI. You can use the HDMI input on the radio and it actually works. Now, Crux, I think, makes an interface that they got from Alpine that Alpine used to make one. Actually, somebody else made it for Alpine. And then anyways, they they broke it. And I think Crux sells a clone of that metro makes a replacement backup camera just to go in there either way now on to let's say like a toyota because toyota is of course one of the most popular radios that replace because it's going to sound like crap and it uses a standard standard camera standard nothing nothing fantastical Uh however you need what's called a smart harness to replace the radio in the car now the smart harness is a brain it's usually the idata rr is the one we like to use a lot of And that'll go in and that will power up everything in the car and talk to it and do all the things that need to do. And one of those things is retain the backup camera. Okay. Now, Metra sells a ton of interconnects, plugs. Plugs, We'll just call them plugs for retaining backup cameras in cars that don't have smart harnesses. So (coughs) not every car requires a smart harness. Some of the older cars don't. And so Metra just makes plugs that plug in and get you your backup camera wiring. Now, most factory cameras, pretty much all factory cameras uh, are, are six volt. They're not 12 volt. So what happens most of the time is people start probing and they blow up the factory camera because they put 12 volts into it. Yeah. So there's a, when, when you buy the Metro piece, it comes with a 12 to six volt step down converter. Um, Pack makes the volt three nine which is a step-down converter for 3.3, 5, 6, and 9 volts. We used a lot of those back in the day. Um, Mm -hmm. But, yeah, so it's totally doable. It's just a matter of – now, the other weird one is Volkswagen uses an RGB camera, and Metra makes an RGB converter for most of the Volkswagens. Adapter, yeah. Um, So, yeah, it's doable. There you go. Speaking of Stinger – do you think they will make a high 10 F-150 fit like the new GM Jeep? No, they actually already have it, and it does not. It, it floats on the outside. It's not cool. Oh, it's not going to be flush mount? No, it's not flush mount. They already make it. Um, yeah. I, well, I mean, if you're talking about the new, new one, no. But the old, the older, the previous, this one. They make this one, which has the 8-inch screen. They make a, a piece that puts it on the outside. Because remember, it's... It's not, yeah, because they're not making the whole new dash. They're just making the bezel that allows it to go where the 8-inch screen is, kind of like what iData does with the MFT1 kit. Um, so it just, it's just, I mean, it looks good. It's not like it's just a floating, ugly screen. It's its all plastics that allow it to, to go in, but it doesn't look like that GM where it's like, you know, you took out that big 8-inch thing and they were able to flush it in there and make it look all nice. They're not doing that because on that one, it was it was just plastics. There's no buttons that do anything. On this one, there's full buttons that do it. And so to remake this one, you'd be looking at a five to $1,000 kit, and they're trying to avoid that at all costs. So, you know, anytime. What's happening now is that most manufacturers are trying to look at not replacing all those controls. Um, 
because it's really expensive. Uh, that's why the push for the two piece unit where you just have a monitor and some cables in a brain box somewhere else is becoming pretty hardcore. Like kit manufacturers are telling, you know, the big five radio manufacturers, if you guys don't start building these, you're going to be out of luck because we can't make dash kits for these cars. That makes any sense for the money it's going to cost. So we need two piece units. And of course, some of them are going, yep, yep, we'll do it. We'll do it like Pioneer, unfortunately. Um, but everyone else is kind of like, yeah, man, <laughs> we're totally about that. Yeah, we should do that. Uh -huh. no, let's have some meetings. Yeah, let's do some, let's do some phone calls. Dina Fernando, have you heard two under seat 12 sub sealed? I want to put my Audison Voce 12s under there. And I know it's difficult for space. <coughs> but what's your opinion airspace is key that's that's just really what it comes down to you have to have airspace if you can get the proper airspace great then yeah. you know why not keep in mind you're going to have to raise the seat up to get the airspace so in for a penny in for a pound go all the way man um and at that point might want to look at just doing ported because i mean what's the difference between two inches and not two inches yeah uh -huh. um but Hey, Dean and Fernando, is it better to use head unit DSP controller to control volume? I have a Helix DSP with a director. Is Fernando feeling better? Are you feeling better? Uh, a little better. Yeah. Right? yeah. Just touch, yeah, man. A wee, yeah. wee, wee, wee bit. Is the door locked? Go yes, it is locked. Why don't you go unlock it so that they can come in? Oh, okay. Because they're, uh, I could see his teeth, which is really weird. Because, yeah. Um, Here's what we found with all of this, whether you use a director, a conductor, or the new gladiator, um, not the car, or any other form of knob, most people really like to just turn up the master volume control because it, it's all a convenience thing, right? I, I mean, we, we could put all these little buttons and dials and stuff in there, but if it's not like, you know, people like to do this on the steering wheel control and they like to do that, would you agree? Yes. Yeah, you guys can talk. It won't kill anyone. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, agreed. Okay. Most yeah, people yeah. like just yeah, using it. The, they don't want to go through all the, like, push, push. Tra I mean, some of the BMW guys might because they're used to that crap. Because yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, how, that's how them BMWs work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Push, push, turn. Yeah. So, um, which is funny because it's all German. Oh, maybe. Anyways, no, we find that most people like to just use the knobs. But, all right. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, have you heard of a situation using an epicenter with door speakers? Do you think it could improve mid bass? Actually, there's a piece for that, to, that you don't want an epicenter. You actually want something else. Um, you want to pick up this piece right here from Arc Audio. It's called a BXM. So pick up the Arc Audio BXM. This is like an epicenter for mid bass, okay? So this will take your mid bass and it'll do some magical arc audio crap and make it sound phenomenal. Uh, it's also good if you have two subwoofers in your truck that are facing each other. But yes, this will make your mid bass sound better according to Brian Mitchell. Uh, that's what it was made for. Didn't know that, did you? No. I, I want something to carry new. arc. Learn something new. Oh, dude. Uh -huh. Arc has some of the like the craziest, cool craziest, stuff. Stuff. craziest yep. cool stuff. Yeah. Especially the Blackbird. Yes. Yeah, the Blackbird is pretty cool. Blackbird yeah. is, is pretty awesome. We installed one of those. You did? Yeah. Yeah, fun. It's awesome. You know, it's data compatible. Yes, that's why we used it. Yeah, that's why we're a dealer. That's the only yeah. product we get to sell. <laughs> that, that is like the ultimate piece. Why don't you guys, well, Ray, why don't you just slide in? Say, hi, this go. is Ray from... Hi. FX Audio. FX that's Audio. Where, where are you guys at? Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Very nice. Yeah, it's a long drive. Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's like Pinellas County, Florida, right? Um, yeah, I guess so. It, it's pretty close. <laughs> so they just drove here just to say hi. Just to say hi. That's that's right. say hi. No, that's not true. We came <laughs> to deliver cable ties. Yes, we did. Yeah, yeah. Did. yeah. 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 That, that and, is a true story. And lunch. That and was lunch. awesome. And lunch. So, okay. Great. All right. So give me another one. All right. So this is going to be... Uh, the MA10 to Evo X2 12.4. Don't we have in the closet? We don't have the AX2. That's mm -hmm. right. Uh, six and a half, six mine, Kappa's, CTs, yep. Uh, fed by 
Okay, like overkill I know, I got a deal. Is the DMA-10 going to give me enough gain to control on... <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, because the reality is, is, like, the... <sighs> Those amplifiers come already maxed out, man. It's a volume knob, okay? That's the secret to sound digitals, that the sound digitals, it's a volume knob. It really is. And so you're going to keep that thing cranked down nice and low, and then you're going to use your DMA-10 to, to pump up the signal. Just be careful. Are you okay? Me? Yeah. Sorry, oh, you, you keep doing this. I'm I know, like, his oh, camera's no. all messed up on his phone, so the only way to get it in focus is to shake it. Oh, it's, really? It's ridiculous, but that's the only way it works. Because he's got, you know, no, you both have Android. Both Android. Oh, that's right. You're Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That is just not good. I know, I know. <laughs> I want an 8-inch screen and a Mustang, but the installers say the only thing that would fit it's the Pioneer. Yep. I'd rather to have a Kenwood. Any suggestions? Um, so he's not wrong, unfortunately. Um, that's that's the brakes right now. Yes, and that was kind of the rub we were doing like 10 minutes ago when I was like, hey, we should make – because Pioneer's done it, and there was kits for it, both Metra – and I data make mm -hmm. a nice kit for the car to put an eight inch screen in the dash. Uh, a lot of the times it's if you have the little tiny three and a half inch screen. Um, that's that's how I data is doing it. You can keep the little three and it just it's like this cool kit that goes over. I can't see what it's called. It's over on the shelf over there. Um, but yeah, right now they're the only guys that are making an eight inch screen to go in. Now, it, the reality is if. It has the factory eight inch screen. You can use the MFT one kit. I know every, oh man, you know, I want to, mm, it's got it. And I don't want to float because you can do a float. We've actually done the, the Kenwood uh, 1057 in the Mustang. Mm -hmm. Like we've got pictures of that 1057 floating right there. Um, personally, I would like to do the JVC 1007 just because it doesn't have the knob that, you know, when you put it up in gear, you're going to punch the knob and it's got VU meters, which is cooler. Um, but I get it. I mean, personally for me, I, I keep saying that. I don't know why. It's just what's happening today. Um, and we'll name that the show. I'm I'm going with a, a seven inch Kenwood. Yeah. So I mean <laughs> I don't really care about that inch. She's not gonna complain. What about the stinger? Uh other than modifying. <laughs> Yeah, well, no, can... because the stinger won't go into that because you, you're going to have to, they, you'd have to do the whole big electric kit and all that all nonsense. Right. So mm -hmm. you want you want to do iData. You want to do Take apart the thing and make it work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello from Ontario, Canada. What's up? Look at that mini. Damn. It's got a lot of lights. What's up, Dan? Up. Dan is in the house. Did you pick a camera, Dan? You know, because Sony suck. I'm just saying. I mean, a lot of people love them. I don't. I, you know, Canon all the way. All right. I Unless you I... got that Fuji money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't, but I got that camera. Uh, Tito Fernando, when installing six and a half inch two-way components with external crossovers on a 2020 F-150, how do you run your new wires? Ah, great question. So typically what we'll do is we will mount the passive crossovers up where the factory radio is, okay? Because there's tons of room in there. There's a brace that goes across that gets removed because uh -huh. uh, it's just stupid. Uh, and we'll make a bracket. So on top of the factory radio, there's actually screw provisions, which is really cool. So you can make a bracket that'll screw right to the top of the radio. You can put your two passive crossovers there. You can get your T-harness and everything right there that loops in through the passive crossovers. Then we'll run two new wires out to the, pa to the tweeters. So everything else is just done there. So the only wires we have to run are obviously from the amplifier to the passive crossovers. And then two new wires up to the tweeters. Very nice. Yeah, super cool. Uh, best interface to add and to a 2012 Explorer with the Sony system. I have a JL Fix 82 laying around. Something better? No, that'll work. I mean, the reality is, is all you need is a T harness. Oh, it's got the Sony system. That's a pack. That's a pack. That's a yeah. pack. So you're gonna do an Amp Pro, the old Amp Pro Sony system. Um, works great. It's, I'm just saying, why not changing the radio? It's I would change the radio. man. The radio you know? is going bye-bye. Yes. I have a 2016 to 2018 rule, and it changes every year. 
Yeah. Um, that radio, I would, I would be like begging you desperately to just put a new radio in the car. A hundred percent. Because yeah. that'll be better. Yeah. And especially if it's the eight inch radio, just like we said, the MFT one kit, man, you can put any radio you want in there. It's, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. You know, and you keep all the controls. That's the great part. It's cheap. You keep the factory volume control, yeah. everything. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Still leaning towards the Sony though. No, go ahead. It's all right, man. It's all right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just depends. It's one of those things, you know, there are places you can rent. You might want to rent it. And oh, and see. just to test it? Yeah. To see how it works? Yeah, yeah. I can tell you that a lot of people don't know how to shoot video with with the DSLR. And it's not easy. I mean, it's great when you're standing behind the camera and you're doing this. But if you try to turn it around and do this, <laughs> that screen off to the side sucks. For you. But yeah, I get it. Yeah, I got 20 cameras. I got my choice. Okay, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> Hello from Maryland. What's, What's up, that? Axman? Oh, wow. It's been a long time, man. How do you avoid the underseat heating ducts when installing amps under seat? Why would I need to avoid them? It's like crazy. All right, so let's, let's put this in a scenario that actually makes some sense, right? Because you guys are from Canada. It gets cold there, I'm told. Um, do you guys put amps under seats? Oh, yeah. Okay, so here's one of those things I think a lot of people think about. We live in Florida, and mm -hmm. it gets hot here, really hot. It, gets, it rains a lot. It does rain a lot, but it gets hot. And it, usually in the summertime, it rains for 10 minutes, and then it turns into steam. And then we have naturally good pores. So <laughs> if I have an amplifier that's mounted underneath the seat. Just okay, raise it up. Well, I, I do raise it up. You know, when, when the air goes underneath or it needs to, whatever. But people always go, what do you do? Doesn't the amplifier overheat? Now, keep in mind when it's, what? two outside yeah two yeah. um with that amplifier under the seat next to the heater that you turned on 20 minutes ago it's hopefully by the, by the time you get into the car the amplifier might actually be at operating temperature that's yep. perfect that's yeah easy. right because it's perfect. freezing and it's never going to be 102 in the car in the winter time is it no <laughs> no it'll, if we're lucky it'll get up to like a high in seat celsius it might get to like 20, I don't know, 25 20, degrees? Yeah, 25, which is yeah. which is like the amplifier is like, yeah, cool, right? It's yeah. perfect operating temperature. Right. For it. Yep. Now, in the wintertime or in the summertime here, it, it's 100 and something in the cab of the car, or, you know, in the car. Yeah. And so now the air conditioner, it's, it's an AC vent at this point. Now it's blowing cold air on that amplifier that was hot as shit because that's the car was 100 degrees, not Celsius. What's 100 degrees Celsius? 40 degrees. Okay, there, there you, go. you go. So, um... So no, it actually works out really well. And, and this has been practiced because I've been doing it for a long time, 13 years, just here. And, you know, we don't ever get these things back going, oh man. No. So that's something to think about, all right? So it actually helps the amplifier get up to temperature because, you know, we get asked all the time when people go, like, have you guys ever had audio not work when it's ungodly cold? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then people go, I don't know what happened, man. My shit cut off. And you go. <laughs> it, it's really bad when all the stuff's in the trunk of the vehicle because that's a sealed area. And it stays cold for, like, a really long time because there's none of that hot air going back in it, right? Right. So, Bingo. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Experience. Experience. Yeah. See? You, you, you served a great purpose today. Thank you. Perfect. That was Success. awesome. Success. Very right. successful. So Dwayne's saying, can we just end this? I'm hungry. Oh, I'm no. tired. We are. This is it. This is it. I'd like so to bling, thank bling. our I'd like to thank our sponsors for sponsoring the show. That's mm -hmm. usually how that goes. Audio control. Thank you very much. Make sure you have audiocontrol.com. Check out the new preloaded enclosures. Head over to Moscone America.com. Check out the Pro Series line of amplifiers. Or if you know, budget you know, the one. Check out the ones. There's one right there. What is in front of it? This is oh, one right yeah, there's, there. There's stuff Literally. in front of it. Can't even see it. Uh, as well as Focal with the new Frack Tweeter. Oh, goody. Oh, look at that. Look at we that. Have, yeah. We yeah. Have the there it is. Right here. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. So thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. Thank you for talking about cartoons at the beginning of the show. <laughs> I drank all my liquid. So that's it. We're out. Bye. Baby right, Black. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.